have a listener? Yes, at least one, Ferris. <laughs> Maybe two. Welcome to the Bitcoin Basics podcast with your hosts, Ferris and Gordon from CoinCompass.com, enabling you to safely buy and securely store your Bitcoins. All resources are in the show notes and description, including our disclaimer. Visit BitcoinBasicsPodcast.com to subscribe and discover other free content. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bitcoin Basics Podcast. I'm your host, Ferris, here with Gordon again. And it is the 5th of April, 2021. The price of Bitcoin is 57,660. The block height is 677,813. Gordon, what are we talking about today? Hi, Faris, and hi, everyone. We have a listener submitted question. And just a reminder, you can submit your question like this one, and we'll answer it on an upcoming episode. Coincompass.com slash ask if you want to do that. We have a listener? Yes, at least one, Faris. (laughs) Maybe two. All right, what was the question? Hi there. I'd like to know the difference between the Lightning uh, Network and Liquid. Um, so what is it? What's its origin? And um, how do you actually use um, both of those technologies? Thanks. Okay, Gordon, that's a really good question, that one. Um, so what is the difference between the Lightning and Liquid? Um, how about I explain the Lightning side and I'll leave you to explain the Liquid side? Go for it. Uh, oh, thanks. Uh, so the Lightning Network basically came in a couple of years ago on the Bitcoin network. It's what we call a layer two network. Um, so I'll try to get a little bit technical, but not overly technical. So Bitcoin, the blockchain, the heights go through, the block heights go through about every 10 minutes, which means a transaction is confirmed and settled in an average of 10 minutes. It can be a few minutes and it can be 20 minutes. So if you're doing mini transactions, buying coffee, um, stuff like that, it's not designed for that. You're not going to wait around 10 minutes for settlement. So the Lightning Network allows mini transactions or transactions that are peer-to-peer off-chain. So if I know Gordon, I trust Gordon, well, I know Gordon, I will send him (laughs) some money directly peer-to-peer on the Lightning Network. So I can use his address, his Bitcoin address, and we can do this multiple times over a month. Um, What we then do is at the end of the month, we then process those Lightning transactions through the blockchain itself. So even though we may have had 30 transactions over a month on the Bitcoin blockchain, it comes across as one transaction. The Lightning Network is instantaneous and it's not recorded on the blockchain until we close that account. So that's basically how Lightning works. It allows micro immediate payments of um, Bitcoin, which you wouldn't otherwise be able to do on the Bitcoin blockchain itself. And then it records all those in one lump sum on the blockchain. Uh, Gordon, any corrections there before you want to explain Liquid? If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like, and share so we can find others like yourself. No, Faris, your explanation is excellent. And I would explain uh, Lightning as Bitcoin's equivalent of PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, an attempt to do some sort of payment um, application or payment layer. So um, that is Lightning. And we have uh, discussed Lightning many times. And I'll link two of our episodes in the description of the show notes if you want to know more about that. So as Ferris mentioned, a micro payment uh, solution. And Liquid, it, so for example, if Lightning is Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, then Liquid is the SWIFT network, a, a settlement layer. So Liquid um, was created by Blockstream. And if you go to blockstream.com liquid, I will read to you their definition of Liquid. Faster, more confidential Bitcoin transactions. Liquid is a sidechain-based settlement network for traders and exchanges, enabling faster, more confidential Bitcoin transactions and the issuance of digital assets. How about we translate what that actually actually means? Um, So Liquid is uh, created by Blockstream and 
Blockstream is a private company, so it's not a not-for-profit or a foundation or anything like that. It is a company. And there is a lot of buzzword bingo that we could mention here, and I'll try to keep it to a minimum, but Faris, feel free to interrupt if I go off the deep end. Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin Liquid is considered to be a sidechain. That's a fancy way of saying private blockchain. That's how I would explain it. Um, Bitcoin is a public blockchain. Everyone can see the transactions. You don't need to ask permission. You don't need to create an account. You just go and do it. If you wanted to start Bitcoin mining, you can just go and do that today. So a sidechain or a private blockchain and Liquid is considered a federated sidechain is kind of the opposite of that. You sort of need to pay for permission. So if you wanted to join the Liquid network, you'd actually have to pay a fee. And it is private. The transactions aren't actually released on a blockchain to the public. There is a blockchain. Um, and that's essentially what it is. It is a private blockchain for banks, you know, crypto banks, exchanges, traders, brokers, market makers. So if the Lightning Network is for micropayments, you know, buying a coffee and other things, then the Liquid Network is kind of like Swift, sort of like a sediment layer. So Bitcoin, as we know, has 10 minute blocks. The light, uh, sorry, the light, the liquid sidechain has one minute blocks. So if you want to, for example, send your coins from Binance to Bitstamp between two exchanges using Bitcoin, you would have to, have to wait 10 minutes. And with the fees at the moment, you might need to wait 30 minutes. With liquid, two exchanges could actually be on the liquid network. And essentially they're sending from Bitcoin to Liquid and then from Liquid back into Bitcoin. And that could take under a minute. So as you can see, there are enormous advantages. Um, you essentially have almost instantaneous transactions between sort of major parties. I won't go into it, but there's something called confidential transactions. So you can actually do things privately. The other advantage of Liquid is that you can tokenize assets. So you can do other sort of non-Bitcoin stuff. I won't get into that, but there is actually a way to, like Ethereum creates tokens and smart contracts, there is a way to do that on the Liquid Network. And so essentially um, what you are doing is converting your Bitcoin, 0.1 Bitcoin, into 0.1 Lightning Bitcoin or LBTC. That's what you're doing. You're going in and out of the network, just like the Lightning Network, but obviously they have different features and functionality advantages and disadvantages. Sorry, you said lightning when I think you meant liquid earlier, but um, okay. so very, very similar. Why would you use one and not the other? Well, I think I, think I just mentioned the advantage. The advantage with uh, liquid is that it is um, used for large payments. So one, one of the disadvantages to the lightning network is that you need some sort of capacity. So you can pay for your coffee or you can pay for small value items. But if you try and buy something of significant value, it depends on who you're dealing with, what we call the channel. And so, for example, if you're buying you know, $5 uh, coffee, then that's fine. But if you try and buy a high value item, that particular vendor or whoever you've got your, what we call a lightning channel agreement with might not have enough funds available. So you can't actually do a high value lightning payment. That's probably the main thing. Um, and I would say perhaps the, the other thing is it's useful for traders. So when traders sort of go in and out of different exchanges, between exchanges, maybe doing some sort of arbitrage between exchanges um, and between exchanges themselves. So I, I see those as the two big advantages. Cool. Thank you, Gordon. Well, hopefully that explained the question. If it didn't, please hit us up again. Um, ask us, criticize us, request more details, anything at all. Um, where can people reach us, Gordon? Please definitely criticize us. People can get to us at bitcoinbasicspodcast.com. There you have access to all our social media platforms, a podcast, YouTube channel, a link to ask us a question like this person did. We can't mention their name because they came through as anonymous, which is absolutely fine. And if you want to ask a question, coincompass.com slash ask, and we will answer it just like this one. Cool. Nice. All right. Let's do our next one. Thanks for watching or listening. Please visit coincompass.com slash free to register to our socials and discover other free content.
Subscribing, liking, and following helps this content remain ad-free. Until next time.